It's another corner. There's bound to be plenty going on there. Pulse is racing. Yeah. Smith, and this is my trip down Sheepfoot Lane. I'm Jose Baxter, and this is my trip down Sheepfoot Lane. Hi everyone, I'm Paul Dickov, and this is my trip down Sheepfoot Lane. Right, good afternoon, lads. Uh, Matt, Hi, right. long time, long time no see. But uh, shall we just go through your CV as to how you arrived at Oldham, and and then you've been much travelled since, but you've had a superb career, haven't you? Yeah, could Which be. Isn't enough. over yet, by the way. <laughs> Let's hope so. Where where did you come from to Oldham? Was it Solly Hill Moors? Yeah, I was playing non-league football um, in the Conference North um, and I was Sully, uh, at Sully Old Moors at the time and that's where Paul Dickov took me. Um, took me from Sully Old to Oldham at the start of, the, I think it was the 2011-12 season. So yeah, I'm back a few years now. Yeah, well, you was a late starter, wasn't you, Matt? You got your degree first, didn't you, before you... Am I right in that? I went to Manchester University and, got, and did, was there for four years. I got my business degree and the timing of it actually worked pretty well because I ended up graduating in, like I say, June 2011 and started pre-season with Oldham in July 2011. Um, Paul Dickov actually let me have the day off to go and my graduation ceremony, I remember, in the July. <laughs> uh, so it all worked out very, it, <clears throat> a good bit of luck and timing, really, in terms of how it all happened really I just played non-league football throughout my time at uni at Manchester for different teams Droylsden, Redditch United always in the conference north I actually played for New Mills um, in kind of near Stock Stockport and Cheadle for a bit um, in my first year so always just enjoyed playing non-league football and then in my final year of uni had a great season for Solihull and that's where a few clubs took a look at me and, and it was it was the gaffer that, that gave me the uh, the opportunity. So I'll always be forever in debt to him. Mm. Yeah, and then you arrived at Oldham. Uh, made quite a name for yourself at Oldham, you know, Matt, especially in the cup run. And you are one of the younger legends, shall we say. I don't know, about, I, don't think I made a name for myself in the first 18 months, but certainly in the last six months, it all definitely turned in the month of January, that FA Cup run we had, um, and then the league form off the back of the FA Cup. So I think mm -hmm. what was quite an average 18 months turned into like a pretty extraordinary six months. Um, <laughs> obviously, it was, yeah, pretty brilliant yeah. time for me. Right. Now, Ose, did you arrive before Matt or after? Um, I arrived a little bit after, yeah, I think, because uh, I sort of, once I left Everton, I had about two or three months out of the game where I was running around and what to do and stuff like that. And I came in on a short-term contract, so I was after Smudge, yeah. How long was you at Oldham before you uh, shipped off to Sheffield United? So I signed about two, two three months after pre-season and then I was sort of gone the first or second game the next season. Uh. Ah, oh, well, there you go. That was Sheffield United's game because you was a big part of their, their build-up, yeah. wasn't you? Yeah, that's right, yeah. Um, I remember playing against them and the fans and that and the team they had was really good. And I remember the captain at the time, Michael Doyle, sort of during the game just said, um, 
would you fancy playing for us? And I I don't know. I just felt like with the new manager coming in and Dick off going and stuff like that, I just felt like it was the right time for me to mm-hmm. have a different different challenge and a massive club in, in, in Chef United at the time, big fan base and stuff like that. And I just thought, you know, why, why not? Like I said, I thought Dick off was a big part of, of my time there as well. And I'm sure he was for Smudge and the way he went and... And, and stuff like that, and then seeing what happened to a few other players and staff who were a bit close to me, I just thought that it's my time to head out. He was very complimentary about both of you two, by the way. And yeah. He'll probably say a little bit more tomorrow, when, uh, because we're going to talk about the twist in it all, where he was sacked between the, the two cup uh, ties, the two oh. famous ones, and, you know... When, when he was just getting the team back fit, because he'd had a lot of injuries, hadn't he, and to put up with, mm. and, uh, and that. But, uh, anyway, we'll, we'll start at the start of the cup run. I mean, how many goals did you score in it, uh, Matt? Uh, remember? Yeah, I think it was the four, the two in the third round, and the two, uh, the two in the fourth round, and two in the fifth round. I was didn't it? Sc- they scored in the third round. We played Forest, didn't mm. we? And we won 3-2. Yeah. I think yeah. Simo might have scored two and Jose scored a free, he scored a free kick, didn't you, Jose? Yeah, that's right, yeah. Um, Simo, yeah, Simo scored two, I think. So, Header yeah, and something else. And a strike. Yeah. And we got, mm. a, they got a man sent off, I remember, and you scored from the free kick. Yeah, that's right, mate, yeah. 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 Well, that, I, know we've jumped a, I know we've jumped a couple of matches. Who scored in those? Can you remember? Any, either of you? The first uh, round. Um, that's a good question. Yeah, it's one I should have had the answer to because I told somebody to, I told somebody to let me know earlier on in it. And did. You, can you, what was the games? Uh, we might be able to know. If, have you got the games yeah. there? Who was against? Kiddy Minster, Harry was away, nothing too. And believe it or not. Yeah, I scored. Well, that the score. Game. Yeah, that was a free kick as well. Smudge, if you remember, I went near post and called the keeper out. Yeah, I'm trying to remember the Kiddy Minster game. And then the like, other one was Cristiano Montano. Yeah. Did he score right at the end? Yeah, it was like a counter-attack, weren't it? Just to right. put the second one. Yeah, well, well, you won 2-0. And then, then we got Doncaster at home. Uh, and that's where Robbie Simpson comes in. And, and that Jose Baxter scored again. There you go. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Yeah, no, I think everyone yeah. finished the first two rounds. He was struggling to... Yeah. Mm. I, I should know that really, shouldn't I? <laughs> I scored in both. Yeah. <laughs> scored in both. <laughs> Young paid young Matthew to give you some wrong information, have you Jose, by any chance? I, I I haven't mate. No. <laughs> no, I haven't. Me and me and Smudge are glory hunters, we just remember the big games. Exactly. Yeah, then comes the fourth round and uh three two. Uh Matt Smith. Two and Reese Wibara got the winner, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, just yeah. after half time. Winch, yeah, remember Winch? Yeah, like Winch was big swinger. It was a unbelievable <laughs> header, actually. <when> you, <laughs> 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 it was, it was about a 40 yard header. Something. <laughs> yeah. Against <laughs> Marina. Oh, it was incredible. It was mental, wasn't it? Yeah, it sure that, was. Absolutely mental day. But, um, yeah, like you say. I, I can always remember the Liverpool game where uh, Luis Suarez uh, yeah. dummied our centre-back and he was just yeah. stood there in slow motion. It, well, it was stopped. Cliffy uh, Byrne, he went I remember, he went, he went to shoot and dummy there and then passed yes, it in the bottom corner, yeah. Cliff yes, Byrne, it was. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I remember man. Smudge absolutely torturing the centre half that game. It was perfect for us because me and Winch started centre mid, and it was perfect. Uh, you and Simo started up front, if I remember rightly, didn't you, Smudge? Did, did, Winch, did Winch not start like on narrow on the wide, and it was Wesso and you? Or no? Um, Wesso and I, you. I just re- I, I just remember at one point uh, the ball coming in, and and Winch was centre mid with me. I remember laying it off, so I don't know whether yeah. he drifted I, out wide and. I think Winch might have started right and, and um, Yus- Yusuf and Changama started, started wide left. Oh, yeah. He had like yeah, four Yusuf. Essentially just packing out the middle. I think. I could be yeah. wrong. Yeah. No, it was, but 
as an attacking midfielder, then it was perfect because everything that went up to you, you won, you held up, and you were against top class centre centre halves, if you remember rightly. And yeah, it wasn't as if they had put the second strong team out. I, I look at some of the names there. They, they had Joe Allen, Suarez, Sturridge, Sterling, Henderson. you know, Stevie G. Come on. Yeah, yeah. well, he, he was sat, he was sat on the bench, uh, Gerard. Yeah, with, uh, yeah, with Carragher. With Carragher, yeah. and he was absolutely screaming about getting tight on uh, on Matt. They yeah. couldn't believe the the space that we they were giving him, and they were giving him a torrid time because Big mm. Gordon in those days used to be sat down as the like the the ground manager, didn't he, in front of yeah. the dugouts and. Uh, he said they were going absolutely ballistic. You know, I think like, that was testament to, to, to Matt, though. Like, he, he, yes, like he said before, he, he weren't really... I think we had Darbs and that, so it was quite hard because Darbs had come yeah. from higher. Uh, so even though Matt weren't playing, no one really seen the work he was putting in behind the way. Uh, the, the scenes, really. He was always constantly in the gym, always working hard, and he was always the same lad. He was never, like, spat his dummy out or I'm not playing or... And every time you come on, I remember Coventry uh, away, Matt, when you scored the other, where you come on and, and scored yeah. and made a difference. And he was always that player. He'd never spit his dummy out. And it was no no surprise for me when he come in in that great cup run and actually scored and got his confidence and then went on the run to where he is now. It was, yeah. it was a fantastic well, career. There's a young lady called Alice Brown who's... Who's followed all the episodes so far? She's got. To, she has a question for Matt, and, yeah, and that's yeah. what did it feel like when you played against Liverpool and scored them two goals? Just remember it being quite surreal, to be honest with you. It, was, it did just feel at the time just so surreal. I think because we scored after like two minutes, and then the second one went in just on the stroke of half time. It, it, like I said, and then the second half we got the goal, and then we just dug in for essentially like forty minutes of just back against the walls kind of stuff. I think we might have had one or two, one or two half chances, but just remember just chucking bodies at the ball. And it was just, the whole the whole day was quite surreal, to be honest. And then obviously I dislocated my shoulder and I've gone in the dressing room. So I was actually quite happy I got to miss the last 10 minutes, to be honest. It was a- <laughs> <laughs> but, um, so then obviously when everyone came back in the dressing room, I just remember the scenes in the dressing room after. It was incredible. But... Um, yeah, I, I would say surreal. Yeah, very surreal. Like the whole thing, it was just one of them just incredible days that doesn't really happen too often in your life, really. But no. yeah, just incredible. Well, you've, you've still got more to come, haven't you? But uh, we've got uh, Alice has a, a question for uh, Rose. What did you feel like when you heard the fans singing Josie Baxter Baby? Um, at Nottingham Forest. Yeah. That that, stopped, like, didn't it? It did, yeah. And like I said, it's a smudge. That was a great away day, that. Because I remember, uh, even though I don't know whether we were 2-0 up or 2-1 up, you always felt like they were in the game. They were a good side and we were away from home. And it was like, when the goal went in, it was relief more than anything. And then to run into the same corner where the fans was and then hear the song, it was... Like like Matt said, uh, you know, obviously it weren't as big as a team as as Liverpool, but it's still one of them surreal moments where, you know, you have all the fans singing your name, you know, you've just potentially scored the match winner, and you're going through to the next yeah. round. It's it, it, it's a feeling that you would never ever get bored of. But now we come to the the Everton game. But we, we had a bad league league run in between, didn't we? We lost a few mm. games and. Uh, they then decided to uh, back company. First of all, and that was before the Sheffield game, wasn't it? Where they, let's put it bluntly, they shifted the all of the backroom staff, apart from Paul, didn't they? And probably the physio. <coughs> yeah. Which was quite, quite, quite to, unique. Uh, did, did that have any effect on, on you lads playing or not? Yeah, a little bit, yeah, because I think it was uh, Jerry Taggart there, uh, wasn't it, at the time? And, yeah, well, uh, Jerry Taggart, Jagger, Taggart and Butler yeah, came both to Forest and, uh, and he was there at the game. Yeah, that, that's right, yeah, because I, me- I remember being in a players' lounge after one game and Butch and Jerry saying we've been put on guard and leave. And of course, it has an effect, yeah, because they're the coaches, the people you see every day. They were great, great fellas and, you know, 
I, I always find that with your coaches, you have a little bit more of a relationship with your manager. Like the coaches always tend to be the, not necessarily the nice guy, but the one you can always go to and have the chat to. So, yeah, it, you could say it had an effect for sure because one of your so-called teammates, family, what, what you had in the dressing room, just being told they're gone. Yeah, well, so used to used to seeing them every day and tags as a <laughs> character, and then butts like Joseph said was like the link between the players and the staff. He was a really liked guy as well, so it was it was. Um, you know, it was a tough time in that respect for us, certainly because they were all well liked people. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then, and then we come to the Everton game, and uh, well, that the, I, I actually missed all the football between the two games because of my shoulder, so I, yeah. missed, I didn't play a game until that. I think that was my comeback game, potentially the Everton game, which I was lucky to make because I dislocated my shoulder so I was out for I think three weeks in between potentially in between the games um, mm. so like I said I, I think I was on I was on the bench I can't remember how long into the game I came on maybe half an hour to go or something I think for big maybe for big Chris Uwaluma I could be yeah 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 I, yeah I remember when that was too old just thinking that just me mind going back to the Liverpool game thinking we're going to nick one here we're going to nick one and I just felt like that whole cut run was just meant to be for us. And I, I just I had such a confidence that one ball into the box and smudged it up, put it away. So even to get the draw was a great result and get back to Goodison, obviously earn a bit more money for the club and stuff like that. But it never quite worked out for us at Goodison. No, I remember but, early on when... But I, I, I always thought... Have you, have you ever seen that game back? Yeah, I watched little clips yeah. where... Yeah, the shot where it hit, it well, hit the post. Towards the end, they was absolutely hanging on. Yeah, it was like the Alamo, right. wasn't it? By the end, it was. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that moment for me was better than the Liverpool moment, the equaliser in the mm. 90th, fifth minute or whatever it was. Yeah. That moment mm. in a in an actual just a moment in itself was by far the best moment mm -hmm. in the Liverpool for me. But everyone's, you know, some people might prefer that Liverpool moment. I don't know, but for me personally, just the like. Yeah, Boo Boozy had come up from the corner for the corner. Yeah. <laughs> it was yeah. mental, and yeah. obviously Jose's old team as well. So even more special mm. for him. Yeah, well, Jose, did you ever play any first team games at Everton? Yeah, I played about twelve, mate. Yeah, did you? Yeah. All right, right. I wasn't sure how many it was. You know, uh, or was you in the reserves like Ian Marshall was, and we. Lifting no, I played to... about. Um, I think I played about three cup games, uh, three three uh, Europa League games, and about five or six Premier League games. Yeah. When when we got over to Everton, uh, we was met with Graham Sharp, who I knew quite well, and, and Big Gordon, and what have you. And I remember at the time, Graham took us me and Gordon for a meal in the sponsors' lounge, and he after he said. Where are you sitting? I said, I'm sitting uh, next to you. He says, in on our on our left, because he was working. Is it was it Radio City? At, uh, yeah, Radio uh, City is the one. And, the and he worked for Radio City at the time, as well as doing work in the community for Everton. And he said, Has Gordon had a trial in our press box yet? Has he gone in? And it was very very tight. And yeah. I said. Uh, no, he said, well, you better take him in it. So I said, Gordy, Sharpie wants you to have a practice in the, uh, <clears throat> to see whether or not you're comfortable or not. I didn't say the word fit him, but he got <laughs> the message, Gordon. <laughs> well, the, the, we haven't got enough bleeps available for me to tell you what he actually said. <laughs> <laughs> but he did, he got in and you know, they have one of those desks that, mm that comes up and then you pull it down. Well, he couldn't even move the desk. When Gordon got in, the desk was under pressure up and uh, <laughs> he had to look over the top of the thing. And they couldn't let him out for 20 minutes after because they stayed live on air. And some fans dragged me over the top so I could get down to sort the press out. Because uh, there was, it was on the back row and there's some railings. One thing that did come out, and I, I was talking to Paul Dickoff about it, that uh, 
he was he was actually talking to uh, David Moyes. Well, initially I'd been talking to Sharpie, and he said, "Hey, it's big centre forward playing." And um, had you picked a bit of an injury up, Matt? Um, I'm, no, I don't think so. I just think I don't think I played the return. I didn't start. I think Big Chris and uh, Barney started the second the re the replay. Um, but I hadn't played much football, obviously, because I'd missed three weeks. Up well, until well I'll, t I'll tell you now. Graham Sharp said, are they mad? And I said, why? He said, they're absolutely terrified of him playing. Yeah. And that's true, that. And that Graham Sharp said that. And I repeated that to uh, Paul Dickoff, who, who by that time was a pundit. <laughs> and he was at both games, wasn't he? Yeah, uh, working for somebody, and he was talking to David Moyes before, and he was terrified of uh, you playing. I remember so that you being a strange him. decision, Smudge, Smudge yeah. not playing. It was Barney yeah, was who started yeah. off front. Yeah, I think yeah. it was. I think, I think I'm, I'm almost certain I started in the 10 behind Barney, you know, Smudge, Did and he was so, two yeah. centre mids, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, but I wouldn't have even minded dropping back into centre mid to get Barney and Smudge up front, you know, because you knew that any chance we got across the ball, it was it was more or less a goal. He, you still see now he's unbelievable in the air, and even the little knockdowns of people who run off him and stuff like that, it's it, it, it's a pleasure to play with him. It's just a shame because, like you say, we got the goal back. We went three one, and actually felt like we were we had a foothold in the game by the last 20 minutes or so and we could have maybe nicked another goal and who knows what would have happened mm. we've got a second yeah. it was a shot I think it's a, long, it's a long way back though isn't it and uh, I always thought it was a mistake that but those two comments of Graham Sharp and David Moyes cemented it and I got the David Moyes bit off Paul Dickoff the other day when I was talking to him and he, he said what he must have picked an injury up, uh, and that's why he didn't play him. Well, obviously not. And no. Really, in that sort of position, they were on the ropes. You might as well risk him, risk him, and, and throw yeah. him in, mind you. Yeah. Because we were very, very nervous of him, you know. But, uh, anyway, the, the rest is history. Where did we actually finish in the league that season? Did we top half? No, I'm sure it was down there like 12th, 14th, you know. Yeah, yeah. I think maybe even a bit lower, yeah. Yeah. Lower table. I think we were flirted with relegation for a bit, but then we sort of... Yeah, got on a bit of a run towards yeah. the end, yeah. We won yeah. We won three out of the last five games or something and we actually bounced a bit back mm. up. Yeah. So, you left at the end of the season, didn't you, Matt? I left, yeah. So, um, Lee Johnson came in. Um and uh, to be fair, that's when my league form actually did pick up a little bit. I got Lee one player of the month for the last month. I think I'd scored a few goals, um, but I was on a free. I was on a. I was out of contract, so uh, I'd obviously up until the point where I started scoring goals was the end of the season. I wasn't offered new terms, so you know I was free to leave, which was it's a great position to be in. You know, for a player who's oh, yeah. banging form to then leave on a free at a young age, it was perfect for me. So obviously. I had a couple of clubs interested and ended up ended up going to Leeds, which which was a great move. I loved it there. Um, how, long, how long was you at Leeds? Just the season, and then I signed. It, it was a kind of bizarre situation at the back end of the following season. I'd scored uh, thirteen, fourteen goals in my first season in the Championship, and then um, I'd signed a new three. Is when that Massimo Cellino, the crazy Italian owner, came in, and the whole behind the scenes at Leeds was totally bonkers. Chaos. Yeah, absolutely. Chaos would be, to put it politely. Um, mm. So I ended up signing a three-year deal and then get sold two weeks later to Fulham on deadline day. So, I mean, that says everything you need to, need to know about that. So I ended up leaving going to Fulham on deadline day the following season, which I did not expect having had a good season and signing a new three-year deal. But such was the nature of the time at, at Leeds. It was it was chaotic to say the least. How long was you at Fulham? I did two and a half at Fulham, two and a half at QPR, and I'm um, obviously having my um, my season at um, finish trying to finish off my first season at Millwall. Yeah. Did you not go to Bristol City with uh, Lee Johnson for a short spell? Yeah. On uh, not with Lee Johnson, no, with um, Steve Cottrell. 
Or um, was it? Yeah, that was during my time at Fulham. I wasn't playing much at all, so I was able to get out. But there was back in the day when you had the 93-day loan um, mm-hmm. option. And I did that and went to Bristol City for three months, which is great. We won League One and we, um, we won the, the JPT as well. So it was, it was a really enjoyable three months. I loved it. And uh, you're now at Millwall. Yeah, and I'm you know, really enjoying it. We we're two points off the playoffs in eighth place. We've got a, a good run in now. Like we've, I don't think we're playing anyone above us in the league. So on paper, we've got an, a good run in with nine games to go. And hopefully we can... I think we're a bit of an underdog, but hopefully we can do something. So you've got Rooney on Saturday night, have you? Yeah. Saturday afternoon. Yeah, we got we got one o'clock. We play Derby, so fingers crossed we can. Uh... Is it on television that night? Uh, no, 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 no. We've got. I think out the nine, two are on Sky, but uh, it's on no. the dodgy boxes if you've got one of yeah. them, right? <laughs> Jose can sort you out. <laughs> yeah, well, <I> can't. <laughs> Listen, you are not in this country now for me to get one. <laughs> I can still sort it, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that, now to you. you. You went off to Sheffield, didn't you? And you were there for quite some yeah. time, wasn't you? Yeah, well, I signed a three-year, yeah. But obviously, with me off the, off the field, stupid antics. I was there for around 18 months and, and then left. Yeah, and then you had a bit of time out of the game. That's right, went, yeah. Went, two years went back to your spiritual home, Everton. That's right, yeah. Went back to Everton for a year and then um, obviously at the back end of that, um, sort of said I could stay, but I, I felt like I was standing in the way of young kids' dreams where I, I, I had my chance and I didn't want to just be there for the, the lad who was liked and stuff like that. So I felt like I needed to get out and get proper first team football and, you know, all of them came along again where, you know, Loved the fans, had a good connection with them. Loved my time there. I felt like that was some of the best football I've played um, when I was at Oldham. And obviously um, went there for a year and didn't turn out the way we would have liked to. No. No. It was a shame that, Jose. And uh, was, now yeah. you're in... N- now you're in where? Yeah, Memphis. Memphis, Memphis Tennessee. Yeah. Yeah, Near you'll me. know it for Elvis Presley reasons. <laughs> Who's Elvis Presley? Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where he came from, is it? Right. Yeah, I was always, yeah. a, don't forget my age, I was a Frank Sinatra fan. Oh, was you? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, but, but I, I were into country and western. But, uh, so so what's, what's it like, American football? It's really good, yeah. Honestly, I was saying to Smudge before, stuff here, eh? people say, oh, you'll go over there and you'll do really well and be easy and stuff because the level you've played on it, it's not. It's not like that. It, it's, the level's really good. The lads are fit. The professionalism's really good. And, you know, we had a really good first game of the season. And after that, obviously, the COVID thing happened and stuff. So we're just waiting to get back. But the standard in the first game was really good. Was it? So, how did you go on in the first game? So, first game we played last year's champions. We were 2-0 up at half-time and ended up losing the game 4-2. You tell me how, like, but it was a, it was, it was a good experience. Uh, you know, they were a good team. They were, they were clinical in terms of they had a 15-minute spell and they went and scored three goals in that 15 minutes. And that's the sign of a good team who can put the chances away. So, it was a learning curve for us and, you know, we'll come back better from it. Ah, well, it's uh, it is a little bit different. And do you actually live in in and around London, Matt? Or do you? Yeah, I've lived I've lived in West London for five years now. Um, so obviously mm-hmm. that's one of the with Fulham and QPR and Millwall. I've always been London based. So um, see, so yeah, I've been see Fulham and QPR on on each other's doorsteps, and now I make the commute west to east, which isn't actually that bad um you know it takes me about 45 minutes in the car in the morning and the stadium's a bit less maybe half an hour the stadium's a lot more central um so yeah no so i've been been here for for a while all right so you don't go on the tube masked up no definitely not definitely <laughs> not. I prefer my car I prefer my car <laughs> well there you are so it's uh i can wish you well jose in 
in uh, Memphis. I might come over with you, Dad. <laughs> yeah, you listen, you're welcome, you're welcome anytime. I'd advise not to come over with me, Dad. I can think of better people to come over with. <laughs> you might be a little bit nuts for you. But yeah, any, you're welcome anytime, mate. Just lend Smudge's helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> Afternoon, Paul. Glad you could join us. I know that yesterday he was on ambassadorial duties, running quizzes for <laughs> for the Foreign yeah. Supporters Club to Manchester City. Yeah, that's right. That's right. You know, um, obviously being an ex-player and working for the club now, you know, it's it's kept me busy and in lockdown as well. You know, it's not been too bad. Yeah, you travel an awful lot for them, don't you? You go all over the world, don't you, Paul? Yeah, Roy, it's, it's been great. You know, um, the, the club obviously played for them for two spells, nearly 10 years in total. Um, they've asked me to, so any events they've got, and, and Manchester as well, but mainly abroad, China, India, Australia, and the States, you know, fan events, partner events, sponsor events, um, bits and pieces of media stuff. So, yeah, I'm a, I'm a lucky boy. Always at the stress <laughs> of management, Roy. Very well, right. <laughs> It's better than being a manager, isn't it? Yeah, a lot less stressful, let's put it that way. I remember when John Sheridan signed for the first time ever. I mean, he was caretaker manager quite a few times before. And he just sat down and he just said, well, my next job's the sack. That's true. Simple as that. And he was first thing I get, Yeah, the first yeah. thing I got told when I took into management, the one thing you can guarantee is that you'll get sacked. I was like, <laughs> yeah, cheers, thanks for that. <laughs> Who signed you, Paul? Signed me for City. Um, first time round, it was Alan Ball in 1996. Oh, yeah. yeah, but it was a bit of a it was a crazy time, Roy, because I had from the August when I left Arsenal to sign for Man City, I had five different managers to the January. And and then what happened? Did you leave? Um, not for a while. Stayed there till obviously '96, and then I left in February 2002. So I had a good go at it when I eventually signed for Leicester. You know, Kevin Keegan had come in that season. Um, obviously didn't fancy me as a player, um, which I had no problem with. I just wish he'd been a bit more honest with me. You know, he kept sort yeah. of telling me he wanted to keep me and I wanted to stay, but then he wouldn't play me. And then he would tell me that if clubs came in for me, I could leave, but then clubs were coming in for me and he wouldn't let me leave. So um, <laughs> it, was, it was a bit of a, a bit of a tough time. But, you know, I just, as I always did, get my head down, work hard with a smile on my face and eventually I went to Leicester, you know, which was a really good move for me at the time because, you know, Man City were in the cha what's the championship now and Leicester, albeit at that time, were more or less relegated in the Premier League but it got me away and got me seven or eight games in the Premier League and, you know, two great seasons at Leicester after that. You went back, did you go back to City from Leicester? Yeah, no, well, I left Leicester in um, 2004 um, and I stayed two good seasons there, scored... 20 all goals my first season. Um, the second season, I think I got 16 goals in a team that got relegated. So um, I had quite a few options, um, but uh, came back and signed for Blackburn in, in the Premier League under Graham Souness at the time. And then, then Mark Hughes, you know, and it was, it was good times. You know, we were in a Blackburn team that struggled initially, but ended up um, qualifying for Europe and getting to FA Cup semi-final. So under Mark Hughes, and it was great. But then the opportunity came for me to go back to the city. And, you know, what saying before, I didn't want to leave in the first place and it was um, Stuart Pearce called me up and Blackburn had offered me a new deal to stay there. Um, but I wanted to go back to Man City. You know, the Blackburn deal was probably financially better for me. Um, but I felt I'd done finished business at Man City and, and wanted to go back. Uh, so it was Stuart Pearce who signed you back, not Joe Royal. He no, inherited no. you, did he? It, Joe inherited me. He was a lucky boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but yeah. Joe was magnificent. You know, he's um, still doesn't feel right calling him Joe. He's still the gaffer. Do you know what I mean? And always you will know, be. You know, you know something. The uh, the two lads talking about you yesterday. Matt Smith said, "I can't bring myself to call him Paul or uh, Dick off or anything like that." They always call him Gaffer. 
I know it's funny. I was literally just before lockdown. I bumped into him in Marks and Spencers. He was there. With his, he was in with his fiance, and he was, he was calling me gaffer. And I was like, "You don't have to call me gaffer anymore, mate." Do you know what I mean? And he was like, "I just <laughs> basically what you've said." Um, but Matt, Matt and Josie, both top top boys, and you know, going yeah. back to, going, I know we'll go into it in a bit, but going back to um, the squad of players as, as people that mm. I had at Oldham were absolutely top class and. You know, a lot of us still keep in touch. Um, probably a majority of that squad we all still keep in touch now, which is great. So you got to Oldham, had a, had a bad run in the league, uh, but you were doing well in the Cup. I was talking to the lads about it last night and we were talking about the Notts Forest game. And was going, in fact, I had all the goals here and Josie didn't realise how many he'd scored on the, <laughs> in, that, in that Cup run. He'd forgotten. Yeah. A couple. We thought it was all about Matt Smith, uh, and it wasn't because it was the earlier games as well. And uh, I haven't got the man, you know, today. Yes, I have. But uh, like in the first game against Doncaster, uh, another one of your signings, and he was from City, wasn't he, Reese? Yeah, yeah. Reese, Reese was great, you know. And obviously, my connections with City, and not having a lot of money or any money um, <laughs> to spend to try and get players in. You know, what, what, I, what I had to do was, was try and call in as many favours and, and the loan deals as I could. Well, let's put it like this. And there is something that I've got here and you'll sort it out in the editorial. Well, we'll go back to City where when you arrived, you was getting loan players off them and a lot of help, wasn't you? In fact, they uh, let us have a lot of equipment, didn't they? Yeah, they did. Because um, obviously they didn't, and silly little things people don't realise, you know, like mannequins um, for training sessions, balls, bibs, um, cones. water, cones, water yeah. drinks, um, yeah. bottles of water for the kids. So yeah, we finished up with more cones than they have on the M1. <laughs> had more cones than players, right? <laughs> yeah, you're about right. And they also had, they give you some uh, physio beds, didn't they, as well? I always remember that, pale blue ones. And they said, oh, they're not using them, they're going to let us have them. When they came, they were still in the cellophane. Yeah, not I know. The connection with City. Yeah, and, they, they were fantastic with me from top to bottom, you know. Yes, um, and, yeah. and I don't think people realise that, and boards don't realise that, that they should stick with what they've got for a while. And it is, but, but what tends to happen, what, what tends to happen, Roy, is, um, you know, when you, when you get things, whether it's equipment like you're talking about, and what I found out, um, in both jobs at Oldham and at Doncaster was the more you sort of do for nothing, people then expect it. If that yeah. makes any sense, you know. So a oh, lot of the does. players, yeah. a lot of the players were getting in and loan um, at both clubs. I was I was doing a deal to get them in from nothing with, with the managers from the Premier League, so it wasn't costing the club anything. And you know, there was a few times when loan deals were expired, I was getting asked, or I would get asked why I wasn't renewing it, but they weren't getting renewed because. Um, clubs just boards and people within the clubs and I mean both clubs here would expect you to do it for nothing all the time and, and it doesn't work that way you know there's only so many favours you can call in a lot of we, you go all the way you beat Liverpool don't you and there's a question here that uh, a young lady sent she sent three questions one for you one for Matt and one for uh, Jose and, and your question was, what was it like to be standing next to Brendan Rodgers when Latics beat Liverpool 3 2 at Boundary Park in the FA Cup? Um, it, was, it was amazing, Roy. Um, yeah. But I'll, I'll even go back to the season before. You know, we played Liverpool at Anfield and um, standing in the technical area next to my hero, who was Kenny Dalglish at the time. Um, you know, that, that was a big, big moment because I was. He was my idol growing up, and then a bit surreal to be standing at Anfield in front of 48,000 people managing against them. Um, Funnily enough, when she rang that in, uh, I actually said to her, well, a damn sight better than standing next to uh, Kenny Daglis when we'd been up 5-2. <laughs> I know, but we actually played really well that game as well. Yes, we did. Yes, we you did. Know, um, I always remember... Robbie Simmel scoring an unbelievable goal to start off with and just before I don't know if people or the fans will remember it just before Liverpool equalised um, Chef Kikuchi was through one on one and he was at a tight angle and with two players if he squares it would go 2-0 you know but that's the fine lines and 
Um, you know, in the big games, as as we see in the following, you, you need to take your chances the following season. And the Liverpool game at Boundary Park, you know, but people say to me a lot about my time at Oldham, um, and I loved it, Roy. You know, it was a it's a fantastic club, still is a fantastic club with great people. Um, the fans were amazing, so um, to sort of half know that I was going to be leaving because I did at that time. Um, yes, I but, know that. Um, but to give. For, for that to be my last game at Boundary Park, it, it couldn't have worked out any better for me. No. I was just telling Matt last night, we were talking about, I said, did it affect the players? And I asked Olsen the same thing, but the Forest game, you'd have your uh, coaching staff removed, hadn't you? Uh, totally before the Forest game, because I think Tony Phyllis, I know Tony Phyllis helped me against Forest, I think, didn't he? Yeah, he did. And it was a, look, that was a, that was a tough time for me and a sad time because I hadn't just lost um, my staff. Um, I'd lost friends within yeah. that as well. You know, Jerry and um, Paul Butler and Ducks, you know, and we were really tight knit as a staff. Um, yeah. they all, and it was. They turned up at Forest, you know, didn't they? And they all did. They all did, yeah, which they I did. thought was fantastic. Um, yes, they did. They, they you turned know, up at Forest because they climbed up to the commentary point to talk to me and Gordon. Yeah. From what and it was, and that was a tough time. That, that's it all the time, you know. And um, my, my time at Oldham it was fantastic, you know. And so great memories, and, you know, talking about the Liverpool game, the, the Forest game is fantastic for, for all sorts of reasons as well. And, you know, and I, I do feel that not just myself, I think the team was slightly unlucky. You know, there's a lot of things went against us, especially in the first season, you know. And um, when we did come back, we were playing three games a week and we, we just didn't have the squad to cope with it. And, you know, I really, really believe, and I know I'm always positive, I believe that if if we'd kept, if we hadn't had the injuries and the illness, that, that we would have went on to finish the season really strong because the players we had, especially Dean Furman and Dale Stevens in that season were fantastic. You know, yeah. I don't think there was a better midfield two in the league. They had energy and then Kieran Lee was unbelievable right back. John Eames with Omar Sheff, they came in. You know, so with the makings of a good squad, but the injuries and illness just absolutely crippled us. When you look at that squad, they all went on to bigger and better things, didn't they? Yeah, they did. You know, they all went on to um, championship clubs. You know, obviously, I, I took Dean to Doncaster when I went because um, I knew what I was getting. Um, you know, Chris Taylor, um, out, Dale Stevens in Premier League, and then later on, Tarky. You know, giving Tarky's debut as a, a 17 year old down at Leighton Orient was, was a, a, not a big thing for me because I, I truly, truly believed in him. But it was a big thing for Tarky. And, you know, I'm sure all Oldham fans will look at likes of Tarkey and Dale Stevens and, and and sort of be proud that they started at the club. Yeah, they certainly did. Uh, so, did it, well, it, the Everton game at Boundary Park, you you was uh, on the microphone, wasn't you? Yeah, it was. As soon as I'm, obviously, as soon as the draw get made after the game, you just beat Liverpool. So, it was, it was a fantastic um, occasion for everyone. And I was, I was buzzing for the fans. That day, you know, because it had been a long time since they'd been able to cheer Andy on. And um, whether we had 3,000, 5,000, 8,000, or 10,000 down the park, they were fantastic. And they're a fantastic yeah. group of fans. Um, but then obviously I went on to, to leave the club. Um, and as soon as that happened, ITV called me up and said, would you come and do the plunder trade and go back to Boundary Park? And I was like, yeah. Well, they would do, wouldn't they? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, a lot of people after that game, I remember them saying to me, well, why were you celebrating? And I was like, because that's the group of players and that yeah. club had been a big part of my life for two and a half years. Well, it and, switched you know, to you, didn't it? The camera switched to you on the match of the day when you was cheering in the studio. Yeah. Well, I, I, I didn't see that till afterwards, you know. And, um, but I was just genuinely delighted. And, Big smudge, obviously, getting the goal again. Um, and I was buzzing for Matt, um, uh, as well as all of the players. And, you know, as I said, I wasn't just a manager at the time. You know, they might, they might say different, but, but we'll be on to be really good friends because we're all in it together. I told you the other day that Graham Sharp said to me, Smith's not playing. And I said, well, no, he's on the bench. He said, they mad. Yeah. And, and, um, and he, not, not just David Moyes, his coaching staff, you know, that they were, I know Matt picked up an injury um, at the end of the Liverpool game, um, him and Robbie Simpson actually, um, but well, when I, I half-fit half Matt you, Smith going into that game against Everton, 
um, mm. just purely for the mental side of it because they were really worried about him, really yeah. worried. And, you know, and that, that, that was a big thing for me with Matt when I signed him because he's, he, he was a great kid. We, we watched him a lot when he was at Solihull Moors. Um, and for me, it was, I wouldn't just say a throwback. I think that's been, not been too kind to him, but he was an old fashioned number nine that people weren't used to playing against. You know, and I think especially in, in, in the bigger games, you know, even in the Forest game, Matt was magnificent for us. But at the higher level, they're not used to playing against a six foot, six, six foot seven centre forward who wants to get in the box and wants to get in the end of things. You know, and that, that was a big that was a big thing, especially in the Liverpool game, by playing Matt and Robbie Simpson together. Because they, they were physical, they would work hard for me, they would put their head in where it hurts and playing Josie just off them caused them all sorts of problems. Um, but Matt getting injured and then not starting at the Everton game, I think that gave Everton a bit of a boost because they were really scared of him. Yeah, well he couldn't understand not, not playing against Everton at the start because he said the, last night he said he, he wasn't injured, the injuries came before the Liverpool game. Yeah, but it was. Whether or not they, they made the decision not to throw him in again because he hadn't had a lot of football. No, nah, uh, I would have started him. <laughs> well, funnily enough, Josie would have started him as well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I would have started him instead of Josie. There you go. <laughs> well, oh, I can't wait for him to see that. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, uh, we lost that game. Uh, but even then, they were saying that uh, they, I think at 3 1, they had a chance to get back in it and somebody missed the chance. And they might have been hanging on again, uh, Everton, then, if they got a bit of momentum. Yeah, I can't remember what the chance was, but I do remember after the game saying, saying in the studio that if that went to 3 2 after what had happened at Boundary Park and obviously having Big Matt ready to come on, um, I think Everton. They would have been hanging on a little bit that. towards the end. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then, where did you go to after? After all, oh, you went to Doncaster because we saw you a couple of times, me and the big man, didn't we, at Doncaster? And, and uh, did you go out to football oh, yeah. after Doncaster, Paul? Quite a few opportunities to go back in, right? You know, and um, same with Oldham as in Doncaster. You know, there's some great people there, and I enjoyed working there. But just to, towards the end of it, well, probably the last ten months. Um, if I'm being honest, sort of knew my um, my numbers were up as such. You know, the chairman John Ryan, who was who was a fantastic guy and so supportive, um, fell out with other board members um, and, and left the club. And the new chairman that came in obviously obviously didn't fancy me um, as a manager. I didn't quite think he was the right man for the job as a chairman. Um, wanted to interfere with certain things, and um, you know, it's probably. Uh, lasting 10 months, maybe, um, which I would have had no problem with. And new chairman came in and, and want to get their own people in, you know, and um, that's what happened. But yeah, I left Doncaster and had quite a few offers to go back in. Um, but I just wanted to take a bit of time out as well, you know, um, five years, five and a half years from finishing planes straight into management. And, you know, I just felt it was, a, it was about time to spend some time with my family, you know. And when you have the manager and when you, when you put everything in, it, as I like to do with everything and give it all you've got, you know. And, um, when you come out of it for a bit, you start realising the little things. You know, I didn't see my boys play football for five and a half years, you know, and, and they were little. And for, I had my first Christmas day at home, you know, but without worrying about a game and a boxing day and um, with the family and things like holidays and everything else. So um, I'm head of sport and excellence for a big charitable trust called the Loris Trust, which um, basically... The whole thing in, in all sports, not just football, is giving kids in, in state schools the same opportunities as what they get in private schools. You know, and I, I, I will admit to you that when I first started doing it, I didn't have a clue what I was doing, as a lot of the people will, will probably vouch for, because, you know, after being in football for, for 25 years and then finding yourself in schools, um, it was tough, but that was a tough transition for me. But, you know, I love it now, seeing, seeing what what the trust is doing within these schools and the pathways that we're giving talented people and sport for all and raising the awareness in schools and, and PE and everything else. It's a, it's a really satisfying thing to do because the, the kids we're working with are amazing. You know, people still ask me now, do, do I want to go back in? Um, and I know it's been a long time I've been out of it, but 
I do, do still get people at clubs asking me to go in. Um, but I think that's maybe passed me by. Yeah, we was uh, talking to him from uh, Memphis last night and he was going on about the home of uh, Elvis Presley and what have you. He's having a great time. He is having a great time. You know, I've said to him, I spoke to him a few weeks ago. Yeah. And I do think, you know, I think it's a crying shame that he's still not playing at a higher level here. Because he was yeah. so talented as a player. Unbelievably yes, he talented. He, he actually said last night, he did refer to it when we talked to him about going to uh, Sheffield from Oldham. And he said he had a great 18 months. And then he said, you know, what happened with my fault? And, yeah. And that's, and, uh, no, he knows that. He, 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 he's, a, he's a good kid. Yes, he is. And really, I mean, if he had been unblemished all the way through, he would have been one hell of a player, wouldn't he? He would have done. And I'm not, I'm not just saying because I got the best out of him, but Josie needed, and I spoke to him loads about it, he needed a manager to, to love him and put his arm yeah. around him. As, as soon as that didn't happen, that's when he mentally went off the rails. Yeah. Yeah, but he's uh, he seemed to like him over there, and he did assure us that it only takes him ten seconds to get from the training ground into his house. Yeah, into that's his all right. So, so that's all right. And, and so tomorrow lunchtime at uh, one o'clock UK time, he'll have his dodgy box going. He's going to watch Matt play down the counter. <laughs> <laughs> everything he's everything he's right. got is dodgy. Oh, I know that. <laughs> you can put that well, in as well. You can say anything to him, can't you? You know, he's... Uh, but, uh, I yeah, mean, I've always had a great time with him. He's never, ever refused me anything, you know. Yeah. No, the, 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 the all older, that whole squad, that, was, yeah. that whole squad were, were magnificent. Yeah. You know, just a, a great bunch of people, you know. Mm. Right, Paul. Obviously, you're too big. Too big time for us now to join us on the call. Bigger fist to fry. But uh, just a message from me to say thank you. Uh, you know, the time I had that old one, but you know, I'll never forget. And, uh, you know, you're a great manager and most of all a great man. And thank you very much for some special memories. All right, Gaffer. I still think after, what's it been, eight, nine years, I can't bring myself to call you Dicky or Paul or Dickov or anything. It's always going to be Gaffer. Um, can't thank you enough. We'll always be eternally grateful for you giving me my opportunity in professional football and really enjoyed the time with you. But, um, it's going to have to be bumped into the supermarket, didn't I, about three months ago. Um, so it'll have to be a beer up the, uh, the Village High Street next time. But um, loved every minute I had with you at Oldham and... Um, you know, they were great times, so won't, won't, won't ever forget that. Well, thanks very much, Paul. Roy, good to see you, mate. I'll have to come oh, down yeah, and see sir. you all when football eventually gets back to some normality. <laughs> uh, cheers, Roy. Take right, care. Thanks.